All right, nothing, nothing wrong with that. First drop, decent size one. Nice, we're looking at Wonder Bread AW Tungsten. It's one of my favorite colors. Wall hanger, small wall. Hey everybody, it's Jay Ball, Blue Jays Outdoors. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, back here out on this small local lake, I was at the, either last video or the video before last trying to catch some bluegills. I got out here a little bit later than I wanted to. Um, it's super windy and a whole different day than yesterday. So yesterday the high was like 38 degrees and that was as warm as it's gonna get for like the next three or four days. It wasn't super windy. So of course this morning it was 18 degrees and blowing 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. So we're gonna stay in the shanty as long as we can. I've got some of the holes drilled around. Uh, I've gotta do a little bit of hole hopping, but we're pretty much in the same spot we started in last time. And um, I wanted to try a little bit different spot, but I got out here a little bit later and there's already some people there. So I just came out here to my old reliable spot. So hang out with me. I uh, can't make any promises. I'll do the best job I can showing you guys what's going on. But again, it's super windy and super cold. And anybody that's tried to make content in the wintertime knows that it is a little bit of a struggle. But I enjoy doing this stuff. I love sharing this with you. I can't thank you guys enough for all your support. So let's see if we can't catch a few panfish. So I haven't pulled my camera out just yet. I don't know if it potentially would scare some of the bigger fish out here. I have caught uh, two decent ones like you guys saw. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to catch a few just to have a little bit of a bluegill fry. I really like fry bluegill. But, um, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't ice fish this much this time of year. This is like the latest I ice fished in the last six years because I'm usually in full maple syrup mode. But because you guys seem to like the fishing stuff more than the maple syrup stuff, I've devoted 100% of my free time to making fishing content for you. So, yeah, I showed you guys that inside turn I was sitting on in the last video, or, or the video before last, still sitting on that exact same inside turn. I wanna do a little bit of hole hopping, but man, it is just super windy and cold out, so it's gonna be really hard to make content outside of the shanty, but we'll give it a try. Sounds like there's quite a few more people on the ice. When I got out here, there was only three guys, but if I look around, Looks like there's probably about a dozen, maybe or so now, but we'll give this whole little area a try. I got about six of their holes drilled, so we can do a little bit of hole hopping if need be. So yeah, see what we can do. A little guy, but they do want that uh, that tungsten, that poly ball, man, they love pink. Maybe 2022 is gonna be the year of pink again for me. Bye bye. Maybe. I'll try to show you guys what I'm using here. So this is an AW number four Wonder Bread with that pink poly ball. And uh, as always, I'm sticking it in the Lure Lipstick Waxworm formula. So I've been having pretty good success. I wanted to, you know, just pick up a few waxworms. I, I, you know, I haven't bought waxworms in probably two years, and that was just out of necessity because it's really hard to find waxworms that haven't been refrigerated. And that's a little bit of a tip and trick for you. If you find waxworms that have been refrigerated in the same temperatures as worms, they're probably going to die. So it's really hard to find waxworms that aren't already on the way out around here. So just out of necessity, I have gone completely away from them, but. In all reality, if I want to improve my odds and give myself the best chances to catch fish and make content for you guys, I probably need to have some wax worms with me at all times. So I might start to have them just as another option. You know, a lot of the uh, tournament guys that are on the Lure Lipstick Pro staff do really, really good on plastics. And, you know, there's a time and place for plastics and, and live bait. So I just need to make sure I can increase my odds as best as possible. So I think I might have to just have them just in case on those days where they get really finicky. 
especially as the season gets on or gets later in the season. Oh, my guy, they're getting smaller. perch. Dang, that's a beast of a perch. Holy crap. Check out that jumbo. Man, that's a beast. I'm going to have to get some pictures and let that one go, but that is a beautiful, beautiful perch. Man, that is nice. That's, geez, he's probably 13 inches long. Man, we have to get some pictures of him. Just another look at that beautiful perch, guys. Look at the size of that thing. That is an absolute toad for this lake. I mean, if we look at it compared to the camera, it's a big, big perch. So beautiful, beautiful fish. Perch this big in this small lake definitely has to be let go. So let's get this fish back in the water. There he goes. All right, man, I'm that that was a beautiful perch. Now, I would probably bet you that 90%, 95% of people would keep that perch, but hey, there's a bass down there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm telling you guys, perch that big on a lake this small, this is not a big lake. It gets overfished quite a bit. It's really important to practice catch and release. I know it would be tempting to take a big bluegill like or a big perch like that home, but it just there's there's plenty of bluegills in here, you know, it's like perch like that you gotta you gotta give them a chance those are that's a big big breeder if i was on st Clair or something you know it might be a little bit different but this small local inland lake here you gotta be you gotta be mindful of the lake itself there we go now it's back in oh there's a fish right there already how did he lose that? Seriously. He had that whole thing in his mouth. There it is. It's like a decent gill. Might be our third keeper. Oh yeah, I think it is, definitely. Might be a pumpkin seed. Yep, nice pumpkin seed, there we go. That's a, that's a nice fish there. Keep him. Looks like a decent one there. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Welcome to this hole. There we go. That's a nice one. Not a nice fish. Another guy. Another guy. How, how?
I hope you guys can see this, but this is the fish forecast that Dawn and I have talked about. So you can see I'm just kind of on the back side of this major feeding period, but this is a, a free app. There's a bunch of them out there, but you know, a lot of times, just depending on the day, this fish forecast is pretty accurate. You can see there's a big peak here later in the day. You know, you go to Sunday, it goes from 18% today to 49% tomorrow. So, you know, this is something that Dylan and I have been trying to pay more attention to. Um, you know, it, it's it's not, you know, I don't want to say it's 100% accurate, but it's actually pretty close. Um, so this is something that, that we use on the radio to just kind of see what the activity is going to be like. So you can say today's a pretty poor day. We've done okay, but tomorrow it's going to be, you know, 50%. And you can see it's gradually increasing. So Monday, because I this is the free version, I didn't pay for this version. If you pay for this version, you actually can see a little bit farther out. But having this fish forecast app does help. So you can actually plan your days around fishing trips. It's almost like some of the deer forecast apps that are out there. So just something to keep in mind. So hopefully there's a tip and trick you guys can use. Uh, look for these uh, free fish forecast apps. They do definitely help a lot. Oh, crap, just came away. That was a nice one too, dang it. I got wrapped around the cable cord. A giant. 